What's good YouTube? It's your boy Infamous Ghost Money, and in this video, we're going to look into Ava Misseldine of Columbus, Ohio, a former local bakery owner who was recently arrested for allegedly stealing the identity of a deceased baby, as well as fraudulently obtaining nearly $1.5 million in government relief funds. We're going to look into the method she used to do her thing, as well as how she slipped up, which led to her eventual arrest. And remember, these are all allegations. This woman is innocent until proven guilty. But after reviewing this complaint, I'm just saying, it ain't looking too sweet for patty cakes. Facts. So as always, if you find value or you are entertained by the video, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and how to stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. We hit that 20K in subs, y'all. Thank you for all the support. All right, let's get right into the information. Ava Misseldine of Columbus, Ohio was the owner of Coco Tea Salon and Bakery, a shop whose muffins were so bussin' bussin' that it was featured on the Food Network show, The Best Thing I Ever Ate. But as you will soon find out, this lady could do more than whip up a delicious batch of red velvet cookies because according to the Department of Justice, she's also allegedly a hell of a fraudster. Miss Odeen's story begins in the year 2000 when she was released from prison after being sentenced to three years for theft, forgery, and escape in Union County, Ohio. I guess the time spent in prison didn't fully rehabilitate her because Miss Odeen would go right back to committing fraud a couple years later. The case paperwork isn't clear on this, but it seems like around 2003, Miss Odeen would get her hands on the information of an individual named Brie Bourgeois who passed away as an infant in 1979. From this point, on June 3, 2003, she would obtain an official Ohio ID under the name of Brie Bourgeois with her photo on it from the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Several days later, on June 11, 2003, Miss Odeen applied for a social security card under the identity of Brie Bourgeois at the social security office in Columbus, Ohio. According to the paperwork, she claimed to the office that she had been homeschooled her entire life with no job, but said she now needed a social security number for her to enter into college. She would provide the social security office a date of birth of 1979, which is seven years younger than her actual age, the names of both of Bourgeois' parents, the Ohio ID in Bourgeois' name she obtained days earlier, and a birth certificate in Bourgeois' name as well. And just like that, she was approved for a brand spanking new social security number directly from the social security office. At this point, from 2003 to 2020, she would live out both lives as her real identity and as Brie Bourgeois. During that time, posing as this deceased individual, she would get a job, attend Ohio State University, obtain her student pilot certificate, get a passport, and renew her Ohio identification in this deceased person's name multiple times. Then in 2020, as you all know, the world got hit with the pandemic. But if you ask me, according to the case documents, for Miss Odeen, it was clearly a bandemic. From 2020 to 2021, she would run the tried and true PPP loan fraud play, stealing money from the government, which of course trickles down to the taxpayers that was meant to be used to keep businesses afloat and allow business owners to pay their employees while they were tight on cash. She would apply and get approved for 16 PPP loans under both her identities, using cooked up bank statements, phony business documents, and false tax information for businesses that had little to no history, and of course, no employees. Between April 2020 to February 2021, she would illegally obtain nearly $1.5 million in PPP loan funds, which according to the case docs, she used to purchase properties, invest in stocks, and wire cash to her personal accounts. And to make things even more interesting, pretty much all her loans were eventually forgiven. You would think Miss Odeen really had the jouet down pack, but it turned out that she was pretty sloppy when it all came crashing down. According to the complaint, in the years Miss Odeen spent living a double life, she would co-mingle her identities, which is what would lead to her eventual downfall. 
such as on September 17, 2007, posing as Brie Bourgeois, she would apply for a replacement social security card using an Ohio ID in the name of Bourgeois that had the same exact information the Ohio DMV had for her real identity. It also didn't help that the pictures on the IDs that she would use were pretty much identical as she put minimal effort in trying to make herself look any different when she posed as Bourgeois. Then on February 2015, she applied for a passport, this time using her real information, but she would list the same exact address on the application and other personal information, further tying the two identities together. Finally, on January 2021, she would once again apply for an updated passport, this time in the name of Bourgeois. On the application, she would use the email sugarinkcupcakes at yahoo.com, which was the same email listed on her Twitter profile under her real identity and also list the same exact phone number, occupation, and other similar information as the application she submitted using her real identity back in 2015. All these connections would cause her profiles to be flagged for fraud in 2021 and lead to an investigation to be opened with the Social Security Administration. And of course, as a result of this investigation, her alleged PPP loan scheme would be uncovered and investigated as well. And during that investigation, they would uncover numerous Zelle transfers and wire transfers where Missile Dean moved money between accounts in the name of both the identities she used, which once again further solidified she was indeed living a double life. Missile Dean would be arrested on June 9th in Columbus, Ohio, and she'll now need to wait and see how this case will unfold, because once again, she is innocent until proven guilty. But with that being said, that's the video on Ava Missile Dean, the alleged double life PPP loan fraudster. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, remember to hit that like button and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the case. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel to add some quality financial content to your YouTube timeline and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. Aight, peace.